Today we're going to have a look at SQL Server Always Encrypted. Now, first off, we're going to create some sample data so that we can go ahead and uh, test this. And also, um, don't worry about following along with the commands too much as we will also put these up on uh, GitHub so you can check out the link below and do it yourself. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and create a database. Uh, we're then going to create a table on that database. Then we're going to insert some values so that we have some sample data to work with. So as you can see, we have now created that table. We have created the columns, the structure, and inserted some data. And I want to show you one thing right off at the beginning, because it will kind of show up a little later. Uh, and that is that the um, correlation of the table, and in this case, the column, because that does change once you encrypt it. Now, with that said, let's go on and move from here to creating certificates as that's kind of the first steps. So the way this works is that we create a certificate and then based on the thumbprint from that certificate, you create a CMR, uh, CMK, rather, which is the column master key. And from the column master key, we can create column encrypted keys. So there's this if bit like if you have TDE, you have a master key, then you have the encryption key and so on and so forth. Similar structure in terms of you need more than one. So what we've done is we've connected to the database and now we're connected to the database, we can go ahead and create that column master key. So this is kind of the first step. So now we've created that column master key, we can check that it exists so we can check the properties. And what we're looking for here is that we should have a true value or existing value in this case. So if we just do a quick check, we can see down here status existing right at the bottom. So that's all good. So now we have a column master key, we can go ahead and start creating a uh, column encryption key or the CEK. Now the CEK we need to run against uh, the columns which we want to encrypt because you might not want to encrypt every column. It doesn't make sense to. It's a lot of overhead. It's a lot of administrative um, power. And it's a lot of um, issues in terms of difficulty if you need to change it later. So we've now created that. And now we have our column master key. We can go ahead and we can create, sorry, a column encryption key. We can go ahead and choose which columns we want to encrypt. So in this case, uh, I'm going to choose two columns. I'm going to choose the postcode and I'm going to choose the birth date because this is the private data in my case. So here we have uh, the two columns. And then we've said, OK, go ahead and encrypt using the key, which in this case is the variable from earlier. And you can see it's generating or encrypting that data. Now, what that means is that instead of you getting the normal output, you're now going to get an encrypted value. So the only way to see the true value is to have the certificate key to basically reverse engineer that to the original values. Now, since the certificate is local on this machine, that means I can do it locally, but I can't do it anywhere else. So again, keep in mind, if you're doing this, you need to think about whether you have the certificate exported, where you need to put it, where you need to keep it, and for God's sake, keep it safe. Otherwise, you cannot read the data in your database. So these are all considerations and very important considerations to have. So now I've encrypted the two columns. So if we go ahead and do our select query from our original statement, we should now see that the two columns that we wanted, the postcode and the birth date, have now been encrypted. So if I go ahead and just run the simple SQL query, you see the same output. It's the encrypted values. So that looks fine, but obviously if I want to read the unencrypted values, all I need to do is add a little tweak to our uh, query string telling it that I want to use the encrypted values and active, and as we can see, the output now returns to the original values. So that's the first part of this. Now, our encryption key isn't going to last forever. So at some point, unless you've scheduled it for like 100 years, um, we're going to need to rotate the key. Now, the rotation of the key is actually a pretty straightforward business. Um, we simply tell it that, hey, I want to replace this key with this other key. So we're first of all going to go ahead and create a, a new key. So if I do a quick refresh here, we'll see that we have a second certificate. And again, I named them one and two in order to be able to tell the difference between them later on. So at this point, if I want to run the encryption wizard, 
what we'll see is the column master key and the column encryption key that are version one. So those we want to change over to version two. So we're going to go ahead and do the necessary commands here. So first of all, um, we're going to rotate the column master key, which is a relatively straightforward process. It's a couple of commands, nothing major here. Um, seems simple enough, right? We create connection. And once we've got a connection going, we can go ahead and tell it to uh, take the encryption key, <clears throat> take the thumbprint from it, and then go ahead and rotate over to the new key. So in this case, we just need to finish off the next section. Now that's using the SQL certificate column master key. So it's not a bit of a mouthful to say at least, but basically create new column master key. And let's go ahead and now we have a, a column key. So what we want to do now is say, hey, I've got my old column key and I want to change it for my new column key. So we have this invoke column master key rotation. So we tell it, hey, we want to change from first one to second one. Straightforward, done. Now we complete that with a complete command, all good. So that part is pretty straightforward. We can also remove then the original column master key. And if we go ahead and we look at our database, what we can see, uh, just get the wizard up and running, is the column master key is now on two, but the column key is still on one. So we've replaced one of the two keys. So to replace the second key, um, that's a similar straightforward process from that point of view. All we've got to do is go ahead and find all the places which the original uh, key exists. So in this case, the column key one and replace it with column key two. Now that could be rather complicated if you're not sure where they are, or we can just do have this nice little for loop that runs through all the database tables and then just gives us a nice little um, list. So in this case, we know that from the sample data we created, it's just the two columns, but we're going to tell it to go through the whole list anyway. And then we're just going to log the output in case there is any. So this is now rotating the column encryption key. And once that's done, we can get rid of the original encryption key, aka okay, the certificate that we've got on our machine, because it's no longer required to read that information. So we've now removed the old column key. If we look at our data, and we just go ahead and again fire up the wizard, we'll now see that the column master key is two, the column encryption key is two. So we've rotated from the first key to the second key. Again, don't worry about remembering all these commands. Again, they are on GitHub, so the link below will give you all the stuff you need. So I can now delete the original key. Don't need that certificate anymore. And I can go ahead and run the same commands as I did previously. I can check to see what the content of my database looks like. I can confirm, yes, does it look okay? Can I get my output? I get my encrypted output. Now can I get my unencrypted output? Yes, I can. All working, all as expected. That's how it works.